The following video is a tutorial for the service and maintenance of hammerhead mole boltless piercing tools with the PowerPort reverse feature. This training will cover the disassembly, inspection and replacement of all internal parts and the body. This tutorial does not cover the service and maintenance of the head assembly. For information specific to your head assembly, please refer to the service video dedicated to your model. Before servicing your piercing tool, identify the tool model and the reverse mechanism. Boltless power port tools reverse with a quarter turn of the rear whip hose and have a threaded tail cone that contains no bolts. Inspect the exterior of the tool body. Check for cracks, severe wear, and damage from utility strikes. Replace the body assembly when necessary, as damage could lead to future failure. Inspect the rear whip hose for rips or tears. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should float freely from one end to another. Secure the piercing tool using either a pipe stand or a chain wrench. Remove the external whip hose. To remove the rear assembly, attach the specially designed socket to the tail cone. Loosen and then unscrew the tail cone and the rear anvil from the body. If the rear anvil does not screw off with the entire assembly, use an open face wrench to remove the rear anvil. Clean and inspect the rear assembly and clear any debris or blockage. And finally, slide out the striker. Be careful not to damage the internal body threads. There are three major components to all hammerhead mole piercing tools. The body assembly, striker, and rear assembly. Inspect the tool body for debris. Clean the interior of the body by brushing or swabbing. Inspect the body for broken or damaged threads. Repair with an internal thread file if necessary. Bodies containing broken threads should always be replaced. The serial number of the piercing tool is located on the back end of the tool body, shown here. Remove the rings off the striker and inspect and clean the ring grooves with a wire brush or wire wheel. Do not grind, polish, or sand the striker. Inspect the ring grooves. The grooves must be square. Worn ring grooves may cause poor performance and the striker should be replaced. Inspect the length of the striker body for cracks, fractures, or any other external damage. Cracked or fractured strikers must be replaced. Perform an internal inspection of the striker bore for debris, brush, and swab as necessary. Clean the striker rings and install on the striker. Check the striker rings for wear with a straight edge. The rings should stand proud of the ring groove. Shown here is a ring in need of replacement. Notice the gap between the straight edge and the ring. Polished striker surfaces may indicate the tool has been run with worn rings, which may slightly hinder tool performance. Check the ring gaps with two U.S. quarters. Consult the operator's manual for exact ring gap specifications. Trim the rings if necessary. Before reinstalling the striker, lubricate the tool body and the striker rings. Install the striker into the body. The rear assembly contains nine components. The control stem, valve, rear anvil, control sleeve, isolator halves, 
valve rings, rear whip hose, tail cone, and control stud. Before disassembling the rear assembly, perform a general inspection. Inspect the rear assembly and clear any debris or blockage. The rings on a power port valve should stand proud when centering the rings by hand. Rings must be replaced when side-to-side -side movement is apparent or the ring does not stand proud of the valve. Check to see if the control stud is at the bottom of the detent slot. Disassembly is required to further inspect the control stem and control sleeve. This valve displays acceptable wear. This valve needs immediate replacement. Inspect the control sleeve. The sleeve must be translucent and free of rips or tears. Any solid colored sleeves must be replaced. The control sleeve should act as a spring. Measure the length of the compressed valve assembly from the base of the anvil to the top of the valve. The control stem should be replaced if its length is more than plus or minus a sixteenth of an inch from the manufacturer's specification. If not already removed, unscrew the tail cone from the rear assembly. Inspect the tail cone threads. Use a thread file to repair any damaged threads. Tail cones with broken threads should be replaced. Inspect the mating surfaces on the tail cone and the body. Damaged mating surfaces on the tail cone or body require replacement. Inspect the rear anvil. Use a thread file to repair any damaged threads. Rear anvils with broken threads should be replaced. Remove the control stud with the socket provided with your piercing tool. Remove the valve and the control sleeve from the control stem. Remove the isolator halves and inspect for rips and tears. Replace both halves if any damage is found. Inspect the control stud threads on the control stem. Examine the stops on the control stem. The edges should be square. Inspect the control stud's threads and head for wear. Replace if damaged. Again, examine the control sleeve for rips or tears. Replace if necessary. The rings on a power port valve should stand proud when centering the rings by hand. Rings must be replaced when side-to-side -side movement is apparent or the ring does not stand proud of the valve. If replacing the valve rings, remove the rings with a utility knife. Prepare the new valve rings by stretching and warming the material. Place the rings onto the valve. Slide the provided hose clamp assembly over the valve ring and tighten. After at least two minutes, remove the hose clamp assembly and repeat on the other valve ring. Remove the hose clamps from the valve. Coat the isolator section of the control stem with anti-seize and install the isolator halves. Brush the ID of the rear anvil with anti-seize. Insert the control stem and isolator into the rear anvil rotating for proper stop alignment. Slide the control sleeve into place. Slide the valve onto the rear assembly, aligning the notches on the valve. The control stud threads must line up with the detent slot. Apply anti-seize to the control stud and install. Torque the control stud to manufacturer's specifications found in your operator's manual. Before installing the rear assembly, lubricate the valve rings and the striker bore.
Apply anti-seize to the rear anvil and the body threads. Install the rear assembly into the body, hand tight. Apply anti-seize to the tail cone ID and the OD of the rear anvil. And thread it onto the rear anvil. Place the tail cone socket on the tail cone and position the wrench at the 2 o'clock position. Using a torque wrench, torque the tail cone to the manufacturer's specification located in the operator's manual. Finish the reassembly by tightening the rear whip hose with an open face wrench. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should freely float from one end to another. Following a regular service schedule will help keep your hammerhead mole piercing tools running at maximum efficiency. 